Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a RAM button for volume control. To demo this, I've actually created a new project file called RAM button demo with the following under my project resources with the following resources keypad 1G, RS mixer, which is an audio driver, which is a mixer driver that I've created for demo purposes. RS45 to QWire adapter, UniQ 7B touch panel, which is a Q unit. So uh, we have got two Q devices, one Q unit and one third party equipment driver. So first of all, I drag and drop all the equipment into the project configuration window and connect them up accordingly. So the RS485 to QWire con connector will be connected to S1 of the touch panel. All right, which is a UniQ, uh, with, which is a touch panel with a built-in controller, and QWire connected to keypad 1G, audio mixer connected to serial 2 of the touch panel 1. Now I'll show you how the mixer driver works. Double click on the mixer driver. What I've done is that I've set two constants, minimum maximum volume of the mixer, which is which I assume that the mixer is has a valid volume from 0 to 100 and I set a event called on volume change all right so whenever I change the volume in the mixer I will raise an event to indicate a new volume change and I have actually hard coded the current volume of the system to 20 during on on initialization all right and next I have three I have three separate other than the default setting of communication okay for all RS232 or serial control equipment I've got three functions created here the first function is set volume whereby I take in a new volume I do a check okay on the new volume with the maximum volume as well as the minimum volume to make sure that the new volume does not exceed the max and minimum if it exceeds the max and minimum the, the new volume that's been, that will be saved into current volume will be the maximum volume or the minimum volume. Finally, I raise an event on volume change and I do a debug print of the new volume to the debug window. Alright. And as for another, the other two functions that I've created is volume up and volume down, namely to increase the volume by one or to decrease the volume by one. Alright. So this is the functionality of the mixer device now I close it what I'll need to do next is that I'll show first how to program a RAM button on a touch panel you click on the touch panel double click on windows go under graphic collections tab and drag and drop a new full screen window into the system double click it drag and drop a push button into the system I'll drag and drag and drop two push buttons into the system all right and label it up and down volume up volume down so on up event on push all right click on the select on the under my project instance window select on audio mixer and do a volume up similarly go back to the previous window click on down event on push and then select volume down to test it click on start oh Okay, no window has been opened in auto execute. Alright, so what you need to do next is to insert the, go to the touch panel one, under main auto exec, and drag and drop the show object of full screen window one into the auto execute to launch the window when the system loads up. Alright, and you click on up, the volume goes up, as you can see here, the new volume gets up. But however, the functionality of a push button is that when you push down, all right, okay, and release, you'll generate the event, all right. But when you when you push down and hold it, 
there's no ramping function being created for you. So for up and down functionality, you can use this. All right. But however, if you want to do ramping, okay, it will this simple code will not work. All right. How do I create a ramping function using the push button? Click on push button, right click event on push. All right, you'll see the audio mixer up. Uh, sorry, audio mixer dot volume up command. All right. In order to convert this into a ramping function, you need to use a loop. Okay. What I'll do here is that there's a there's a command called you go under button one push button one which is up button. All right. All right. Under this um my project instance full screen window one push button one object. All right, there's a function called is button press. This function will return, okay, whether the push button one is still pressed. All right, so what I'll do is that I'll start a do loop. All right, loop while, all right, the full screen window button is pressed. And to play safe, what I'll need to do is that I'll need to put a wait. All right, you cannot keep firing the sequence, the push, the volume of the volume of command to the mixer. It's usually too. How should I put it? The mixer might not react in, uh, quickly to the command. So usually I will put a delay. So I put a zero point two second delay. All right, before I execute the next volume up command. To create for the function for the next button, sim similarly copy the do to the bottom. Okay, and copy the the rest of the command also to the bottom and accept the volume down command. And next is that you have to change the push button here to button two because the process is window one push button two. All right, so it's a different button. And then you restart the simulation. So this way, as you can see, the button is ramping. Okay. All right. And there's another option or another way of doing ramping button. All right. Another way of doing it is that you go to full screen window one. All right. We can drag and drop another type of button called the repeat button. Okay. Repeat button. We put two, two of them in and label them the same thing. Okay. Up. Sorry. This is down. And up. Right click on the on the button. Do a on repeat. Okay. So on repeat, all you need to do is that insert the command. Okay, this is this is uh but a button up, so you drag and drop volume up to it. Alright, go to the next button, but volume down, click on on repeat, and then you click drag and drop the Falling down to it. Okay, and stop and restart the simulation. So as you can see here, when you press and hold on the button, automatically, okay, the ramping function is created for you. So with the repeat bu repeat button, you do not need to insert more complicated codes. It's just to link the button command to the new vo to the uh, volume up or volume down command. To change the interval of repeat, as you can see, the repeat interval is actually a bit far because previously we have used 0 0.2 second as the delay time. Okay, this will this is actually shown by the speed of ramping. Okay, when you set it to a slower delay, all right, of 0 0.2 second, the speed is fast. But however, when you click on up and down on the repeat button, it's slower. Why is that so? All right, you go to the setting of the repeat button. There's a repeat interval property here, so it's at 0 0.4 seconds. That's why it's slow. All right, so you can change this to 0 0.2 second, all right, which is similar to the delay we have given for the ramping time, all right, of, on the previous sample. We start it again. As you can see, it's now about the same speed as the other buttons. All right, okay. Next, another thing we can do is also to insert a bar graph. 
Let's insert the vertical bar graph. This bar graph will indicate the volume of the system. The initial volume of the system is 20, so let's set the default value to 20. Alright, this bar graph will actually, the, bar, the, the value of the bar graph can actually be set here. Alright, the default value. And the maximum and minimum of the, of the bar graph is 0 to 100. Alright, so next, what we'll do, what, what, what we'll need to do next is to create an event or to handle the event from the mixer. Go to configuration window, right click on the mixer, event, on volume change, handle it on the touch panel. So what you need to do is that when a new volume, has, when the volume is changed on the post, process is executed, a new volume will be passed into the system. Do a copy of the new volume. And we'll need to set the volume to the bar graph. Go to touch panel 1. Okay, under my project instance, go under full screen window 1, select the vertical bar graph, and then select the function set value, drag and drop set value in, paste the new command into the set value, stop stop the panel simulation and restart it. Alright. Now you can see the bar graph changing when a new volume is being set to the mixer. Alright, this creates a feedback interface to the system. Alright, next, what we need to do next, what I want to show you next, okay, is to do programming of a keypad. Alright, let's close this. But for programming of a keypad, we have no visual simulation of the keypad. Alright. So what I can only show you is are the codes necessary to program a keypad for ramping as well as feedback. Alright. So to handle ramping for the keypad, alright, go under configuration, right, right click on the keypad 1G event, button 1 on push. Alright. When button 1, when one, button 1 has been pushed on the keypad, alright, this process will be generated. And next, what you need to do next is to go to audio mixer, same thing. Assuming that button 1 is volume up, so I just drag and drop volume up onto the system. And next is that I'll have to create, alright, like the, 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 the previous sample, okay, the earlier first sample. Okay, I have to create a loop, alright, with a do and a wait of the same time, 0 0.2 second. Alright, next I will loop while Go to keypad 1G, go and look under button 1. Okay, look while it's pressed. Alright, that's it. I've created a ramping function for the button 1. So this will mean that when the process button 1 on push is generated, you will keep ramping the volume up until the button 1 is pressed returns a false. Which means that the button has been unpressed. Alright. If you want to program button down, right click event, assuming that button 2 is button down. Okay, volume down. Okay, same thing, copy this exact same commands, copy, paste, and you change the volume command to volume down instead, and you change the button 1 here to button 2. And that's it, I've created a volume up and a volume down. For keypad 1G, there is a built-in bar graph on the keypad 1G. To allow you to use the keypad 1G bar graph to reflect the volume level on the mixer, what you need to do is to set up the bar graph. To do a setup of the bar graph, okay, under the bar graph, there are actually two commands, set scale, set value. Set scale is to set a minim new minimum and maximum value to the scale of the bar graph. Alright, so before you can use the bar graph, it's recommended that you do a set scale. Alright, although the minimum maximum is reported to 0 to 100, but it's actually better for you to actually do a setup before you use the bar graph. So to set it up, go to other touch panel, go under auto execute. Alright, this auto execute process will be executed when the system boots up. Alright, so I'll need to do an initialization. So go under keypad 1G, bar graph, do a set scale. I set the scale to um, 0 to 100. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you how to do a feedback of the mixer volume to the keypad. 
Okay, similar to the bar graph I've shown you just now, the feedback to the bar graph on the touch panel. Alright, to do the handling of the feedback, select on the audio mixer, right click event on volume ch on volume change. Alright, there's only one selection, touch panel one. Note that when you are using a touch panel and controller type of a configuration, which means that a con touch panel and controller separate unit, alright, the keypad will be usually connected to the controller. So when that happens, you will need to select controller one instead of touch panel one when you do the volume change event. Alright, for this case, we are using a touch panel with a built-in controller. So all you need to do is to select touch panel one, and you will find that the event there's in the event there's already a handling function. Okay, to put the new value into vertical bar graph one or full screen window one. So under this command, I'll add a new function to set. Okay, so you go under my project instances, keypad one G and bar graph, do a set value to the bar graph. All right, the value to be set will be new volume. All right, after this is done, okay, whenever the new volume is changed, okay, be it by the keypad one G or by the touch panel using the buttons on the panel, the mixer will generate our volume change and when volume is changed, both the on-screen window 1 and the keypad 1G will receive okay, a change on their bar graph. So automatically, feedback is handled on both the bar graph, sorry, both the keypad and the touch panel 1. Alright, and this, this, uh, and this feedback is automatic and will happen regardless of whether you are using the panel 1 you are using, using the touch panel or you are using the keypad to control the mixer. Alright, with this I've shown you how to ramp, create a volume ramping function on the keypad and a volume ramping function on a bar graph as well as to link the feedback of a bar graph okay, and bar graph on the keypad to the audio mixer's volume change event. Alright, with this I would like to end this short video. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.